The Rose. Properly speaking, this is not a book at all, but only a bundle of letters. They were written in pencil a little at a time. They could not have felt formal if they had tried. But by the time such fragments are laboriously typed by faithful lotus buds and printed, bound, and given a name, they look like a book, and reading them through, I am troubled to find them so personal and sometimes so intimate. It is not that I think the personal or the intimate interesting or valuable, but that I did not know how to give the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted without giving something of my own soul also. If I had waited till the harrow had lifted, perhaps a less tired mind would have found a better way. But then the book would have been from the well to the ill, and not from the ill to the ill, which I think is what it is meant to be, a rose plucked straight from a briar. There is no ordered sequence in the letters. There is no ordered sequence in the way the trials and temptations and the weary little feelings of illness fling themselves upon us, hurling their forces ruthlessly upon an already weakened front. But with them, anticipating them rather, there is always the succor of the very present help. All these letters have been written, as one of them tells, what time the storm fell upon me, not after the coming of the calm. In the Meditations of Marcus Aurelius, we are told that it is in our power to live free from all compulsion in the greatest tranquility of mind, even if wild beasts tear in pieces the members of this needed matter which has grown around us. For what hinders the mind, in the midst of all this, from maintaining itself in tranquillity? But when he wrote that, his needed matter was not being torn in pieces. It was sitting comfortably aloof from the claws of wild beasts, so his composure does not do much for us. It can, indeed, be exceedingly irritating. There is more of the pith of life in Satan's Put forth thine hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh, we understand that. The toad beneath the harrow knows exactly where each tooth-point goes. The butterfly upon the road preaches contentment to that toad. There can be minutes when the toad is not properly grateful to the butterfly, no, not even if he comes dressed like a very good Christian. He is upon the road. He isn't under the harrow. He never was there. Such a minute came one morning when all I wanted was something which would help me to escape from myself, and there is nothing that can so quickly give this release as a book that takes me out of my own life into the lives of others. Just then the post came, and a book packet, said my dear nurse. Her voice, with its note of expectation, was as delightful as what we hoped would be the contents of that parcel. Eagerly she opened it, and eagerly I watched her. Would it be something like Bernard Allen's Gordon and the Sudan, which I had just read, or John Buchan's latest story? No writer could carry me off to the heather just then, as he could. But no, that fat parcel was full of tracts for the sick. I tried those tracts, but somehow they took me nowhere. This sounds most unmissionary. Unhappily, it is true. It was not till some time later, and after several similar experiences, that it struck me perhaps the reason was because they were obviously written by the well to the ill to do them good, and so they could only flutter past like ineffective butterflies. But I found that things written by those who were in pain themselves, or who had passed through pain to peace, like the touch of understanding in a dear human letter, did something that nothing except the words of our eternal Lord could ever do. So these letters purposely go forth from under the harrow before the sharpness of the prod of a single tooth is forgotten. They go to some who are under far sharper harrows, and they carry all they can to them of sympathy that understands. They are not, of course, meant to be read straight through. That would be intolerably tedious. Nor will every letter fit every mood. Illness has its moods. 
but I hope that they will not irritate any poor toad. And now, in the 22nd month of this new way of living, the way that began with your joy, the proofs of these letters have come, and with a greater diffidence than ever, I let them go. They go to some who are disappointed. They hoped to be well long ago and are not well yet. This little song is for them, and then for the others, never forgotten, for whom the end of illness will be heaven. Before the winds that blow do cease, teach me to dwell within thy calm, before the pain has passed in peace. Give me, my God, to sing a psalm. Let me not lose the chance to prove the fullness of enabling love. O love of God, do this for me, maintain a constant victory. Before I leave the desert land for meadows of immortal flowers, lead me where streams at thy command flow by the borders of the hours, that when the thirsty come I may show them the fountains in the way. O love of God, do this for me, maintain a constant victory.